Good morning, boys and girls. Tell me what we have been learning about. We are on lesson nine, so we've already had eight lessons about sort of the same thing. We have been learning about classification of animals. That's the actual title of our entire unit. So if somebody says, what's our unit about? You should say, oh, it's about the classification of animals. Classification means grouping of different animals. We have grouped animals by cold-blooded and warm-blooded, vertebrate or invertebrate. And we have learned about five vertebrate groups of animals. If you look at this poster, this helps you to remember. We have A for all, M for my, B for best, F for friends, R for represent, and V for vertebrates. Plus they give you pictorial hints about what these, what the A stands for. A is amphibian, M is, B is, F, R, and all of these animals are vertebrates, okay? Super important to remember all of those things. All five of the animal groups that we have studied are vertebrates. They all have a backbone, okay? Um, think of an animal that lives in our neighborhood, in our habitat. Some of you live out near the woods and you see certain animals out there, but all of us have animals living near us. Think of an animal, maybe a wild animal that you have seen in our neighborhood. How would you classify it? Look at this. What kind of skin does it have? How does it breathe? Does it have fur? Maybe it has feathers. Does it live its entire life in the water and breathe through gills? Maybe it has scaly skin that's dry. All of those characteristics can be used to describe any animal that you see, plus the insects that you have known about from last year which are invertebrates. So animals from these five vertebrate groups live all over the world in many, many different habitats. So today we're going to learn about vertebrate animals in seven very different places. Listen for examples of different animals in each of the five vertebrate groups, amphibians, mammals, birds, fish, and reptiles. And think about the characteristics that help us classify or sort them. All my best friends represent vertebrates. Now that you've learned about each vertebrate group, you know about many characteristics that taxonomists use to classify these animals. Who wants to try naming the five groups of animals that make up the vertebrates in the animal kingdom? I would like for you all to do it. Ready, go. Were you able to get them all? Well, why do scientists classify organisms? I'm assuming you were able to get all these because we just went over that. Um, scientists classify organisms because there are so many living things on the earth. It gives scientists a way of studying them by showing their relationships. And how do they classify them? They look for common or shared characteristics. What are some of these common characteristics? Well, you've learned that some animals are warm-blooded, others are cold-blooded. It's a great way to sort animals. Some are vertebrates, some are the, others are invertebrates. You've also learned that there are many other ways to classify animals into smaller and smaller groups. The scientific classif classification system, taxonomy, uses these names, kingdom, phylum, class, order, 
family, genus, and species to describe the groups from largest to smallest. When they classify animals, taxon taxonomists, boy, I'm having a struggle this morning, compare and contrast animal habitats, physical characteristics, skin coverings, feeding habits, and reproduction. Today, we're going to look at seven different locations on planet Earth, one on each of the continents of the world. We can use our new skills to practice classifying a few of the animals that live in each place. Our first stop is the Sonoran Desert. The Sonoran Desert is actually in North America where we live. Um, here are some examples of animals that you may find in this North American desert. The Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, the Gila Woodpecker, the Desert Bighorn Sheep in the background, the Roadrunner, the Banded Gila Monster, the Bobcat, and the Turkey Vulture. Just by looking at these animals, are you able to classify them? Well, the bobcat and the sheep are both covered in fur. So we know that they are mammals. That's right, any animals covered in fur are mammals. What about the Gila monster? It's a reptile and it's one of only two venomous lizards in America. What kind of animal is the rattlesnake which is covered with scales? Yes, it's a reptile and it's venomous as well. And it's one of the few reptiles that give birth to live young. Cool. Very different habitat. Let's move on to the Amazon rainforest in South America. Native to the rainforest are the spotted jaguar, the green anaconda, the three-toed sloth, the red-bellied piranha, hmm, we know who that might be, the blue and yellow macaw, the pink-toed tarantula, and the caiman, which looks like a small crocodile. The anaconda and the caiman are both covered in scales. The bird should be easy one to spot. The only one with wings and feathers is a macaw. And remember, birds are warm-blooded, the piranha should be familiar to all of you. Those are Paolo's fish relatives. The jaguar and the sloth both belong to the same group. Who can name that group? Hmm. Yes, they are mammals and you can tell because they're covered with fur. As you've learned, mammals give birth to live babies. Does this dark hairy spider belong to one of the vertebrate groups we've studied? Right here. No, a pink-toed tarantula is an invertebrate. It's cold-blooded and it has an exoskeleton. It's a member of the arachnid group and it might have been something that you studied along with insects last year, even though it's not an insect. It also has an exoskeleton. <clears throat> Let's move to another habitat. Mm. This is an alpine habitat. Alpine is associated with the Alps, which are high mountains in Europe. Um, what do you see in the background there on the rocks? Down here. That's a rock ptarmigan, and it lives in the Alps. And so does the black alpine salamander, hmm. the marmot, the golden eagle, the Apollo butterfly, and the pine marten. Which do you think is not a member of any of the vertebrate groups that we studied? If you're looking for a vertebrate, you're looking for an animal with a backbone. Vertebrate, 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 vertebrate. Is this a vertebrate? No, this is an invertebrate. It's an insect, has an exoskeleton. The black alpine salamander shares characteristics with both a lizard and a frog. Think about how you would classify it. It's a moist skinned amphibian, 
but an unusual one that lives only on land and gives birth to fully developed live young. <laughs> Weird. So maybe the ponds are too cold for its eggs to, to develop if it's way up in the mountains. What two-legged feathered animals do you see? Birds. Birds are feathers. Birds have feathers and they are warm blooded. So we have eagle and ptarmigans. And then there are mammals. Okay. Look for animals with fur if you're looking for mammals. We have a marmot and a pine marten, sort of like a weasel. Next habitat. A river habitat. This is the Ganges Delta of India on the continent of Asia, and it's home to swamps and forests and creeks. The animals that live here include the black crowned night heron, the wild boar, which is like a, a wild pig, the olive ridley turtle, the Ganges river dolphin, the Indian python, the blue-eared kingfisher, the mugger crocodile, and the chital. I don't know what that is. Can you spot the cold-blooded reptiles here? Cold-blooded reptiles. Cold-blooded reptiles. The crocodile, the turtle, and the python, which is up in the tree. You see it? are all representatives of the reptile group. Which one of these animals are warm-blooded? Okay. Any animals with fur are warm-blooded. Any animals with feathers are warm-blooded. So you have a few. The polluted waters of the Ganges River have ruined the habitat for a number of animals, and this river dolphin is endangered because of the river's pollution. Only one of four river dolphin species in the world, it is a mammal just like its ocean-loving relatives. The Ganges River Dolphin is sometimes called the blind dolphin because of its eyes lack a lens to give it clear vision, but it still uses its eyes to help it find direction. And of course, our feathered friends of the sky, the kingfisher and the heron, are both birds. This is an African savanna, which is a grassland. I bet you've seen pictures of the many large game animals that make their home in the savannas of Africa. They include the giraffe, the elephant, the hyena, the wildebeest, the lion, zebra, and impala. All of those animals that I just named off belong to the same group of vertebrate animals. And what are they? Mammals. Every single one of those animals has fur. Birds like the hornbill and the chelia live here as well. They are also warm-blooded. Um, and venomous reptiles, snakes like the gaboon and the black mamba are deadly to their prey in the savannas. Not a snake fan, but they are reptiles and they are still interesting. Wow, very different habitat. Aquatic. This is the Great Barrier Reef of Australia, and it's home to many different sea animals. Animals here include the bottlenose dolphin, the anemone fish, and the blue spotted stingray, the box jellyfish, the black tipped reef shark, and the leatherback sea turtle. Is the jellyfish a fish? Who remembers? Well, all fish are vertebrates. So does a jellyfish have a spine? No. So can it be a real fish? No. It's an invertebrate, right? Has no gills and it has no spine. To be sure, this jellyfish has many long tentacles. So it's very strange, okay? But what do you think about this anemone fish? Where is it? 
Uh, I don't know, are these the fish? Um, is it a fish or not? Yes, it is a fish. And it's also called a clownfish because of its colorful markings. It lives among the tentacles of other invertebrates, the sea anemone. But it has gills, it has fins, it has scales, and it spends its entire life in the water. It has a backbone, so it is a, a, labeled a real fish. The sea turtle belongs to the reptile group, and you probably remember that the dolphin is a milk-producing mammal that breathes with its lungs. What about that shark? Is it a mammal or a fish? It's a fish. It breathes through gills, and it does not produce any milk for its young. What about the stingray? Is it a fish? It is. It's a fish, too. It's a relative of the shark. It has gills and fins. Finally, let's move to Antarctica. Cold, cold, frozen. Southern part of the world. Antarctica, it is the southernmost continent and one of the coldest places on Earth. Emperor penguins live in its icy waters, along with blue whales and humpback whales, leopard seals, Skula and snow petrels spend half the year in darkness in this frozen coastal region. Only two vertebrate animal groups are found in the land of Antarctica. They're right here. That's one of our groups. Penguins are what? Birds. They've got wings and feathers. They lay eggs. And we have these animals that all have fur, breathe with lungs, even if they live their entire life in the water. If an animal has fur, it is a, if an animal has feathers, it is a, they are all warm blooded, have to eat a lot of food to, to stay alive. Energy in the food that these mammals and birds Eat is used to warm their bodies and keep them from freezing. Interesting part of the food chain. These Antarctic animals survive in harsh frozen conditions and they're largely dependent on krill, which are tiny shrimp-like crustaceans with exoskeletons that live in the water beneath the ice packs. They are the primary or main source of food for the predators of Antarctica. As you can imagine, living in the extreme cold of Antarctica presents a major challenge to cold-blooded animals. A few fish have adapted in an interesting way to survive in the cold waters that surround Antarctica. The ice fish has a special chemical in its body that acts as an antifreeze and keeps them from freezing. Otherwise, if your body temperature fluctuated with the outside temperature and it was dark and there was no sun to warm up in, your body would just completely freeze in Antarctica. So not very many um, cold-blooded animals can survive in Antarctica. There are a few invertebrates that have been found um, in Antarctica and have found very interesting ways to survive. Some mites survive, which are sort of like a spider. They survive by living in the fur of mammals or in the feathers of birds close to the warmth of their warm-blooded hosts. Ew. So there are so many interesting facts about Earth's animals. Before I go, let's each share one interesting fact that you have learned about vertebrate animals. Think for just a moment about an interesting fact that you wish to share. It can be, all of these animals are vertebrate animals. So what would you like to share about fish, amphibian, bird, reptile, or mammal?
It's been so much fun for me to be with you again. I'm so proud of all that you've learned about the animal kingdom over the past few days. I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. In the meantime, I encourage you to keep your eyes open. As you see an animal or read about an animal, think about how you would classify it. Is it an invertebrate, which means it has no backbone? Is it a fish, amphibian, bird, reptile, or mammal? Very interesting. So I'm going to scoot back. We're going to do some questions. I'm going to scoot back to some of these pictures and ask you questions. Not all of them, but here's the Sonoran Desert. Um, two of these animals are venomous. The Western Diamondback Rattlesnake and the Banded Gila Monster. To which vertebrate group do they belong? right they are reptiles and how do you know that they're not amphibians is there water there for them to lay their eggs in no do they have moist skin no so they have hard scales and um They do not have to have, uh, they do not have thin, moist skin. They've got hard, hard scales that keep the moisture in to them, so it doesn't all go away. How do you know that a roadrunner, which is this right here, is not a reptile? Well, it has feathers. Any creature that has feathers is a bird warm-blooded bird okay let's go to the next one this is the amazon rainforest and um there are two animals the spotted jaguar and the three-toed sloth they're mammals based on what you see how do you know that they are mammals mammals have Fur. You're right. Is the pink-toed tarantula that lives in this ecosystem a vertebrate or an invertebrate? And why do you think so? Vertebrate or invertebrate? It's an invertebrate because it's a spider and spiders have exoskeletons. Let's move on to the mountains. This alpine meadow What does alpine mean? Alpine refers to something related to the Alps or something in a high altitude above the tree line. The black alpine salamander's method of reproduction makes it a pattern breaker. How is its reproduction process different from other amphibians? Remember we talked about this guy? He's an amphibian, but he, he's got the skin that needs to stay moist but he does not lay, or she does not lay eggs in any water. This amphibian gives birth to live young. Odd creature. Love the creatures. But they're odd. Ganges River Delta in India. What's a delta, do you remember? Sort of a fan-shaped area where a river flows into a bigger body of water. Um, name the warm-blooded animals in this picture. Is this warm-blooded? Yes, because birds are warm-blooded. Is this animal warm-blooded? No, because reptiles are not warm-blooded. Is this animal warm-blooded? No, it's a reptile. Reptiles are cold-blooded. Is this animal warm-blooded? Yes, animals with fur. Are mammals, mammals are warm-blooded. Is this animal warm-blooded? Yes, this is a mammal that lives in the water. This is an aquatic mammal. Is this animal a mammal? No, it has scales and it's cold-blooded. Is this animal a mammal? Yes, that makes it 
warm blooded. It has fur. Animals with fur are warm blooded. Is this animal warm blooded? Yes, this animal has feathers. It's warm blooded. You've learned about the large game mammals that live in the savanna on the continent of Africa. To which vertebrate group do the venomous gaboon and the black mamba belong? This is the black mamba, I think. And I don't even see the gaboon. Do you see it? Is it up in the tree? I don't know, but that looks terrible. What vertebrate group does this animal belong to? That's right. It's a reptile. And what characteristics of this group do they have? They are cold blooded and they have dry scaly skin. Last picture. You've learned that some of the animals that live on the ice shelves of Antarctica, the Earth's southernmost continent, are warm blooded and they they live here very well they've always lived here so which two groups of animals are warm blooded and live in antarctica mammals and Birds, mammals and birds live in the cold because they're warm blooded and they can regulate their own body temperature. I think you guys have done well. We will do a little bit of prep for our assessment. But other than that, you guys are ready to go. Nice job. I hope you learned a lot and you enjoyed Rattenborough.